Van Gogh the 23rd. 3.7, The legend of the bus driver who ran amok. This legend is well over a century old from my time and place, but it bears repeating. It is a story that needs our inquiry and examination. A school bus driver by the name of George Arthur Schopenhauer worked in the Bronx of the concrete jungle known as New York City. He had been an exemplary employee of the city of New York for nearly 30 years. George never missed days of work unless one counts the day he took off for his wife's funeral about two years before the event in this story occurred. George had driven the same route for over 25 years. He was an excellent driver and had never been in an accident. He had a most excellent record. One especially, bleak. Win today after dropping off all the children at their destination. George commandeered the bus and got on the interstate heading south. He continued south without stopping for more than short rests until he reached the southernmost tip of Florida. He drove the bus right out onto the beach. The bright Florida sun was warm and bright on George's face. He simply camped out on the beach for three days before they found him. George reveled in the sunshine on the beach by day watching the blue ocean as it ebbed and flowed. And he slept in the bus by night. The authorities in Florida asked George why had he pulled this crazy stunt and he answered them with this simple explanation. I got tired of driving the same route every day for 25 years. I just needed a vacation and some sunshine. At this time in history, it took a few days to transfer George back to New York City. The newspapers of New York City were filled with his story. You see, George's story struck a chord with other Bronx City dwellers and they empathized with him. The transit company that owned the bus and was George's employer was conflicted as to what to do with him. The growing publicity was also causing them to feel some pressure from the general public. By the time George arrived back at the Bronx he had become a minor hero. A small crowd lined his entrance to the police station and welcomed him with large banners and cheers of encouragement. The bus company was extremely diplomatic and decided not to prosecute George for stealing the bus. They offered him his job back if he promised to never take another bus on a joy ride. George quickly agreed to this contract and signed on the dotted line with a huge smile on his face. George felt like a great weight had been lifted from his heart and thanked the city profusely. When the general public found out about George's new contract that allowed him to keep his job, his story went viral and he became an instant hero to the whole nation. The New York Times even went so far as to call him the George Washington of the 20th century. George's neighbors and followers sent up a Bronx cheer that was heard around the world.